funny. A friend of mine asked me to do this video for changing the lower end fluid. And I said to him, I said, but there's dozens of those videos out there. You know why? And, and some of them are done by cute chicks in bikinis. You know why? Why does anyone want to watch me change the lower end fluid? And what he said to me was, uh, I've watched that video with the cute girl in it in the bikini. He goes, and I've watched it 20 times, and I still don't know how to change the oil. <laughs> so I guess she's a little distracting. So. Okay, what you're going to need to change your lower end gear lube obviously you're going to need uh, some marine gear case lube i think this is uh, 90 weight you're going to need a flathead screwdriver a large one uh, like a half inch blade i like this one with the square shaft because i can put a wrench on it and it helps me uh, not slip off and go all the uh, slot on the screw you definitely need uh, this device. This is a gear case lube pump. Uh, this screws into the top of your gallon um, jug and it's got the proper fitting on the end to screw into the lower end. By the way, I also use this, this fitting. I take this off and I use it when I pressure test my um, lower end units. You're going to need a metric Allen wrench, and you're going to need uh, at least two per motor, the little gaskets that go on the plugs. Some rags. You're also going to need some place to put the oil, to catch the oil. If you're doing this out in a marina or out in a place that has, that's very windy, even this tub won't be uh, big enough to catch some of the splatter that occurs when the wind hits these drips coming down. So you're going to want to put on um, preferably something disposable, like a big piece of cardboard or something that you could just get rid of. Um, I'm fairly well protected by the wind from the wind today, so I really don't think I'm going to have any uh, splatter. First thing you're going to do is take your Allen wrench and you're going to remove the covers for this inlet or intake. Keep these parts together and set them aside. Okay, when we remove that intake cover, we expose the drain plug. Uh, two drain plugs, actually. Um, the drain plug becomes the fill plug. And this is the upper plug that we're going to watch uh, to, to determine the, the fluid level. Now we're not going to get much oil coming out yet because I haven't opened the top plug. You'll see we'll get a little bit of oil dripping out, but until we open this one up, uh, there's a kind of a vacuum in there. This plug has a little magnet on the end. So you want to make sure you wipe it off. And also, we have a little water the old washer on there so you want to remove that toss that you need to replace these every time you take them off Just make sure plugs good and clean looks good set that aside take the top one out now as soon as you open this top one you're going to let air in from the top and all oil is going to come out. Okay, 
there she goes. And the top one, top one's uh, a little different. It doesn't have the magnet on it, so it's easy to keep them separated. The one with this little nub, that's the magnet. That's the bottom. And this one's the top. The top also had a little washer on it that I'm going to discard. We'll be replacing both of those. So that oil was changed a hundred hours ago and it still looks very good. I'm not seeing any milkiness. If you saw milkiness here, uh, like oh, any frothy or, or tan coloration, uh, you probably have a problem with your seals. So this oil looks, actually looks great. I like to tilt the engines up a little and make sure I get all the gear lube from the prop side of the shaft. Uh, if you were in a windy condition, this is where the wind would uh, catch that stream and sprinkle it all over the place for you. Well, this is how, well, it's draining. I'm going to prep these plugs with new washers. And I buy these in bulk. Buy them, I think they come in kits of like 10 or 12. Um, much cheaper than buying them onesie twosies. Every time I do this, I need to, I need four of them, so it's just better to save a little money, get them in bulk. All right, while that's draining, I'm going to just talk about this briefly. Uh, I've seen two different versions of this: one for quart size, one for gallon size. I mean, you actually save money if you uh, buy these in the in the gallon jugs. Uh, so just get the bigger one of these two. Um, fitting screws right into the bottom. I'm going to use one of my old washers on here. May not be necessary, but... And you don't need tools on this. Just hand tighten it. Now I'm just going to pump. And the oil level is going to fill up in this gear case until it starts coming out of this hole. <laughs> okay, you can see it's starting to come out of the upper fill. I like to just make sure that it's coming out clear without any bubbles. And I think that's fine. I'm going to take my upper upper plug. It's got a new gasket on it. It's the one without the magnet. not a fan of starting a fastener with a tool, but it's kind of hard to reach. Just be careful not to cross through. Now I'm not putting a lot of torque on this. It's just easier if I put pressure on the back of the screwdriver and use the wrench. Alright, so make sure you have your lower plug ready. This isn't going to rush out of here because we've put this upper plug back on and it's going to create kind of a um, vacuum lock of sorts. Take this off. Make sure when you're putting the new plugs on that you don't have two washers in there because that will absolutely leak. So you can see it's barely barely able to come out just because there's no air opening on the top. And again, I'm 
not putting a lot of torque on these. I'm just trying to not slip off and booger up the threads. Make sure you wipe down the lower end real good and then just put the cover back on. Just tilted that up a little. Give me some room to work in here. Last thing we have to do is reset the maintenance indicator. And you'll see here we're getting the warning messages. I'm at 105 hours. Shows up on my Yamaha gauge as well. So to dismiss it, to dismiss this uh, indicator message, I'm going to hit set. So port starboard motor. Now I'm going to go to menu. And I'm going to go to logs. Trip. I'm going to arrow down. Maintenance. I'm going to hit set. And here I'm going to hit, um, I'm highlighting the reset all. I'm going to hit set. It's going to confirm. Are you sure? Yes. So now both engines are at zero of 100 hours. So 100 hours from now, I'll get this warning popping back up. Second item we need to reset. We're going, I'm going to go to Vessel, which is where I have my Yamaha. I'm going to go to Options. I'm going to go to Information. I'm going to have to go next to Maintenance Reminder. And you can see we, I've set standard maintenance intervals at 100 hours. I'm at 105. That's the message that I'm getting. So I'm going to say reset all. Want to reset all of them? Yes, I do. So now I'm at zero hours of the 100 hour interval. I'm going to back out of all this. I want to shut the key. Now when I turn the key on, I should not get maintenance interval warnings for either motor. And I did not. Excellent. Obviously in this video, all I did was change the lower end fluid, uh, but I can assure you I've done the rest of the 100 hour service as well, which included engine oil and filter. It includes uh, fuel filters and gaskets. It includes uh, water, fuel water separators. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight lines.